Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Pitch Us. My name is Tim Cooley, the author of the Pitch Deck book. I'm really excited to have our celebrity guest today, Ari Newman, with us. Ari, please introduce yourself. Hey, I'm Ari. I'm uh, an investor at Massive. Uh, we are at Mass. We are a multi-stage investor in deep tech, fintech, SaaS, and climate tech. I was an entrepreneur for 15 years. Worked in a variety of industries. Have built and scaled companies that are both B2B and B2C facing uh, in a bunch of different domains. And I've been a VC for about a decade based in Boulder, Colorado. Awesome. Thanks for being here. One of the main reasons for this show is to kind of bring to light what's happening on the back end of presentations. Um, and a, a lot of presentations just don't give the information that we're looking for. And so Gabriel, happy to have you here. Um, to show us what you're doing and then also provide that feedback uh, that a lot of entrepreneurs never actually get So from investors. So uh, please share your screen and pitch us. Absolutely, thank you. All right, can we see this? Yep. <clears throat> okay. Hi, my name is Gabriel Gillespie. I'm the founder and CEO of Omniship. I'm returning commuters into couriers for affordable same-day delivery. <laughs> In 2020, I bought a house in Southern California while I was active duty as a force reconnaissance marine. It was a real fixer upper like the one you see on HGTV. While I was renovating that house, I was still working 60, 80 hours a week and I was trying to buy my tools, supplies, materials on secondhand markets like OfferUp and Facebook Marketplace. Items that were 15 miles away, 20 miles away became a nuisance because people no longer wanted to come to my house to drop it off and they definitely didn't want me to come to their house at night. So this caused me to buy those tools and supplies at full price or delayed a lot of my projects. And I realized I couldn't be the only one with this struggle. At the same time, I was looking at small businesses dealing with that little thing that we're all familiar with called COVID, which was causing them to be shut down for long periods of times and unable to reach their customer base, which unfortunately caused a lot of them to close permanently. Throughout the entirety of this, though, we had billions of cubic feet moving on the road every day, unaware of opportunity, but eager to make additional money due to the rising cost of goods. This is why I believe Omniship is the solution. Omniship is a marketplace connecting businesses and people with daily commuters to create affordable same-day delivery opportunities in secondhand markets and for small business growth. Every startup has a lot of assumptions, so I like to start with a couple of facts. Re-commerce platforms like Facebook, OfferUp, Poshmark, Craigslist are growing five times faster than traditional retail right now, and they'll be totaling $289 billion by 2027. Secondly is that consumers and customers are willing to pay more for a faster delivery, and they'll leave one website and go to another if they know they can find it. This same logic needs to be applied to secondhand markets where buyers and sellers experience friction, and generally those sales don't occur. And finally is that these markets are growing and they're not slowing down. Offer up to 20 billion in 2018. And one of their main revenue drivers is in-app transactions. And I've asked a lot of people now, and I've yet to find someone that hasn't paid cash in hand when they're buying and selling on these markets. So the ability to plug in a in-market, a same-day delivery system into these platforms would be huge for their revenue. Omniship does have competition in the ride-sharing last mile delivery platform, but what puts us apart is our software. We have a decentralized dispatchless software system that allows users and riders to users and drivers to connect directly. What this does is a series of constraints and formats to filter out the drivers and users and what they need for those vehicles, where they're going, to help for scalability and efficiency in the long run. Right now, everyone's hustling. Everyone's buying things or selling things or looking for extra work. And with over half of US workers right now trying to make extra cash, Omniship's low friction model to make money is a great opportunity. And secondhand markets like OfferUp, Facebook Marketplace, these are no longer niche. These are day to day. Everyone's using these things. Everyone's familiar with these. So with these coupled together, it's a great time to automate these markets and plug in a same day delivery system to increase their use. Gone is the day of the cable guy telling you to be there between 2 and 6 p.m. And you can't leave your house because you're worried you're going to miss him. With OmniShip shipping platform, shippers have the ability to do specific delivery times, specific instructions, real-time notifications about when it's been picked up, when it's been dropped off, and where it is en route, as well as if they know a driver specifically for the trust and standards, then they can pick that guy directly. The mobile app is easy to download, easy to learn to use. The difference in this is it allows drivers to pick up as many packages as they want with a freedom of movement that doesn't tether them to dropping it off immediately as long as they can meet all of their timelines. How is Omniship going to make money? 
Omniship is going to charge either the business or the individual that's going to publish or deliver to the platform for a same-day delivery needs. Omniship will take 35% of that fee, while 65% will go to the driver. Additional revenue drivers are going to come from insurance, scalability, movement, and security as this continues to grow. Other revenue models include the ability to have users fill out buyer profiles and give them a proportion of selling that data, which lets companies now have a better understanding of daily traffic, where people are going to and from, and maybe items that were being bought and sold that we weren't sure of anymore because they're not in normal stores. This is my vision. I believe OmniShip needs a strategic partnership with, with OfferUp or Facebook Marketplace, with hopefully with an acquisition at some point, which will allow these companies to grow exponentially and increase their revenue. API integration with software like uh, Shopify for small business integration to give them that same day delivery opportunity that legacy shipping companies are looking at already and the small guys are still struggling to keep up with. Security options for OmniShip as we continue to grow, taking off-duty cops and highly trained individuals for that rent and armor car feel for those high value items that we need to move around these bigger cities. I find developing a no to low cost software incorporating public transportation for highly dense urbanized areas with existing OmniShip platforms. How are we going to market? Omniship did launch December 5th of 2022, and we rapidly worked out all the bugs in our soft launch in beta. And we started our paid on January 4th. Up at this point now, we have over 70 drivers and 70 users, with a bulk of them here in Southern California. Focusing on our drivers right now is our is leaning back into my military background and the shifting gig economy to get a good last network effect in Southern California before we approach the LA market. We're also focusing on our brand awareness because I'll bet you a paycheck that you've never heard anyone brag about being an Uber driver. And I think we can change that. For the shippers, we're focusing on social media and, di and digital advertisement in those spaces to connect with people buying and selling on secondhand markets, as well as in the flea markets and other secondhand areas. Omniship is asking for a million dollars raised on a safe note. We've raised $300,000 already. Some of these funds are going to be used to hire a CTO and CMO full-time to finalize the utility patent for our software to continue to fund the background checks and the insurance required for our drivers to continue growing and scaling our digital marketing and then the API development that I previously discussed for both Shopify and plugging into some of these larger platforms. This is our team. I'm a nine-year force of constant marine that recently got out of the Marine Corps. I had several small LLCs while I was in in manufacturing and human performance. Carlson Choi joined our team as the chief operations advisor with a multitude of exits and success in business. Ryan Navarez is our marketing advisor, is also our creative director, and is up in LA, has several successful builds. <clears throat> Simform is the company that built out the software for me, and they're full stack developers front end and back end. Come join Amiship today as we're going to connect to e-commerce markets like never before. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks for presenting. Um, as a Marine myself, thanks for your service. Um, good to see another Marine out there. Um, so so uh, please, let's start it off. Um, Ari, uh, what were some of the things that you you liked about the presentation? Yep. Yeah. Uh... What I, what I liked about the presentation, Gabriel, is that you covered a lot of ground quickly. You covered okay. a number of key points. You talked about uh, you know, where you're starting, ultimately where you want to go. Uh, you talked about market differentiation. So I, th I thought all of that was great. Yeah, I agree. I, I like the, the focus of what you're trying to accomplish. Um, I really like that you, you've got some traction in the raise as well you know, from an investment point of view. Um, and I think that there's a lot of areas where we can help clean up, uh, you, you, you really condense this really quickly. Um, and so let's start with areas where we think, uh, you can improve. Yep. Happy to jump in here. Um, so, so the first one is I actually think you can simplify the, the value prop and use case. Uh, you know, you, you, and this is sort of general feedback for you. You talk about the value and you talk about the market all top down, this giant TAM, and then mm -hmm. you're gonna you know, get a little piece of TAM. This business is a bottoms up business. You launched in San Diego, you started with 10 drivers, you got to 30 drivers, you got to 50 drivers. What I wanna hear is what your per driver unit economic is. And if you're profitable in a market or at a particular critical mass, right? If you're losing money at 50 drivers, are you profitable? At 100, are you profitable on a per driver basis? And you know, looking at other businesses like Bird and Uber um, and any sort of last mile delivery logistics or on the ground businesses, 
they figure out how to build a profitable business unit in a market, that becomes the run book for how they're going to scale into other markets, mm -hmm. right? And so I think it would, it would help you a lot if you're like, we're going to crush it in San Diego. Here are our core unit economics. We believe we can do this in 40 other cities. It helps me understand sort of the crawl, walk, run evolution of how the business is going to scale. It's pretty hard for me to believe that we're going to take like a multi-billion dollar TAM and just say we're going to get a tiny piece of a huge pie and that's going to all work because you're going to build it market by market, neighborhood by neighborhood even, right? And then in, you know, the, the last mile delivery market is saturated, gas is expensive, there's traffic, like, the, you know, people won't drive for eight bucks an hour anymore. So if you, if you show mastery over those core unit economics, here's what, I, here's what I charge, here's what I pay, here's my margin, it works every time. I think it goes a long way to building credibility that the business can be scale, profitable at scale. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm going to agree with that as well. I, uh, we talk a lot about that business model, um, getting that out earlier, right? You've kind of buried it a little bit further in the deck. Um, but doing that, you, you build the business, business model from the bottom up, right? Like you mentioned, um, mm -hmm. really easy way to get market. And you're not using these $100 billion markets. You're actually using it very cleanly with what you're doing. Um, so you can get that your, your TAM is actually you, not the market itself. Um, so you can think about that from a market point of view. Any other areas, Ari, where he can focus on? Uh, yeah, a couple other quick notes for you. One, one is when you, so when you talk about your vision, there's, so there's a couple of things I'm looking for. One, one is I want to what, I want, first I want to know why you personally are passionate about building this business and where the founder market fit is. Mm -hmm. So I, I understand that you had a personal story and frustration and that gave you the idea. That was the spark. But part of what I'm looking for is, how, you know, why, are, why or how are you going to spend the next 10 years grinding on this to make it a giant company? Why are you committed or what is, what is your personal mission around the business? And then related to that, you could have that tie into the vision. So your vision is a bunch of bullet points about things you're going to do. But, a, but a, a good vision statement is we want to be, you know, the country or the world's, you know, most successful and largest scale last mile delivery partner by using, by, by using existing, um, you know, commuter infrastructure, right? They're, like, ultimately, when you get to scale, if you are a 100x larger business, what is the business? And, and, what, and what is the brass ring that you're shooting for in terms of, you know, creating uh, significant enterprise value? So I think you can really simplify that because that's a big hook for an investor. I want to know that I'm backing a founder that is super committed and they've got a huge vision. Yeah, I think um, I'm going to, is there any other things that I'll go, uh, Ari, if there's other things? You uh, sure. Uh, th this last one is totally technical knit, but on your last slide where you talk about what you're going to do with the money, I, I think you could just, you could just say like use of proceeds what portion of the million bucks is going into people, into sales or customer acquisition, and then ops? Okay. Right? Some of these are like tactical unit economics, and then you're telling me how much you're going to pay people. Um, doesn't tell me where the rest of it goes. So I think typically what I'd like to see is like, of the million bucks, we're going to spend 30% of it on tech. We're going to spend 20% of it, 20 of it on ops. Right. And the rest on like marketplace launching or customer acquisition. And then how long is it going to last, especially in this market where fundraising is difficult and where it's, it, you know, the reality on the ground in 23 is that investors want to see like close to 24 months of runway. So it's hard. So are you going to spend this in six months? And then really you have to go fundraising in three months, or is this 16 months and cash flow break even and you might not need to raise for a long time? So clarifying some of that again, will help uh, understand exactly what we're getting. Yeah, this, this was for 24, but that's a good point. Great. That's a huge okay. selling point, right? This is two years of runway and it gets me into how many markets, like, you know, that, that, that's really part of your pitch is how am I de-risking this investment and, and what milestones are we going to hit as a result of your capital coming in? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so let's, let's start with this slide. So first of all, you should end with this slide. This is the ask slide. If you noticed how long we were just chatting, and you had your last slide up. In any kind of presentation, the last slide typically gets the most airtime. And what I like to do is have a final uh, summary slide, right? Like, which is your ask, 
what are those major milestones, how you're going to use the funding. And you can put your contact information on the slide as well. Um, so you don't really need a thank you slide. We, we get the thank you, you're going to say thank you. So if you just wrapped everything up on this slide, it's going to get the most airtime. We can start reading through it and it's going to remind us of the whole presentation. Um, so something that's a very technical thing, but um, I've just seen it work really, really well in people asking questions um, and asking questions is a good thing. So, so functionally speaking, hyper focus on the problem at the beginning, right? So uh, Ari mentioned, you know, like why you wanted to do this, you know, uh, and how that, that passion is going to carry you through this 10 year journey. Um, if you can keep all the problem statements right at the very beginning, what ended up happening is you kind of like took my brain on like uh, kind of a whirlwind. Right. You start talking about the problem and then you bring up the solution a little bit and then you talk about the market and you go back to some more problems and then your team and you start introducing more of the problems that you're or even more of the solution as you're going through the presentation. And it's kind of hard to follow. Um, and so I recommend keeping the, all the problems that you're in this last mile delivery for secondary markets all in one place and then show how your tool is doing that thing for those secondary markets, right? Because that's really the, the, the key of this. Um, and then go right into a business model, right? The very, like you even have 30 to $35 per driver background check. Like that's part of like the, 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 the business model in a way, right? Like what are the unit economics? And you've just introduced this on your second to last slide. So introduce all the numbers right after the problem, solution, numbers. And then I'm gonna say, that's when your forecast is. That's is, here's market number one, we've got 70 people, Mark, you know, like, and you can walk us through a five-year projection on that. Um, and it keeps all of the data that's relevant together, right? Um, and then go into the competition, you know, uh, there's a lot of people doing very similar things in this space right now, all trying to market or grab their market, their local market. Um, so I'd be a little bit more um, comprehensive in that market slide um, and see what other people are doing in, in different markets. Um, so those are some of the more technical things. Um, trying to think of what else I wrote. Oh, team. So uh, your team seems very strong. But what I want to know is who's working on this thing today? Like what's the full-time team or even part-time team? Who's actually functionally building it? And then who are your advisors? Unless all those advisors are working for you um, uh, to grow this company other than just providing advice. And then the final thing here, and this is another just area of opportunity, uh, slow down. Uh, it's not a race. Um, mm -hmm. If you, if you break and pause at the right times, that will allow certain elements to sink in uh, where you want to maximize that input of language. Um, and so that just comes with practice and doing this a million times. But um, those, those are my feedback points. Ari, anything else? I, I have one suggestion uh, or idea. It's, it's like one of my favorite presentation hacks. Go through your presentation and only allow yourself to make one key point per slide. So if you ran through the deck, what is the message you want the audience to get on each slide? And if, you, if, if, if that doesn't hit you over the head, if it's not obvious either in the headline or on the page, then the slide's trying to explain too much. I totally agree. Awesome. Anything else? Uh, the, the point of, of an early deck like this is to get the next meeting, to get the investor to lean in, to really understand how you're going to be successful and why you're differentiated. So don't be, don't be afraid to say the things, keep it simple, that one message per slide, provide, you know, provide some visibility into the trajectory that you're on so that you can get the next meeting. And yep. so to Tim's point, I don't know how fast you're gonna scale. I don't know how many markets you're gonna be in with this million dollars. I don't know what your revenue targets or your margins are gonna be. And so I, we got through the deck, but I actually don't know if this is a viable business or not. Yeah, agreed. So with that, you know, we're kind of jumping the gun here and the goal is to get to due diligence. That's the whole point of uh, the, a deck like this is just to get to that next meeting. Um, and so based off of what we heard today, right? And that's what we're judging this off of, 
um, Ari, would you take this company on to the next meeting and then provide any feedback there? Uh, unfortunately, no, I would not. And it was largely for the reasons I just mentioned that there's not enough clarity on the trajectory of the company uh, or what the market wedge strategy is. Yeah, and I'm gonna have to agree. Uh, I, I've heard, a, I, I know a lot of companies that are in this space right now. And so there's that. I do know there's more competition out there than what was listed. Um, but I, I don't know what the business is. Um, I don't know how the solution is really different from what's out there. And so therefore it would be a no for me, but this is a great opportunity for us is that now we've gotten to know you. Um, and this is something I would love to follow up with you on to see what your, what, see what the next version of the deck looks like. Right. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Would, Any questions from you, you to us? Nope. All right. Well, I would just I would just close by saying, Gabriel, I, I, I think if you have all the data uh, that we suggested in the deck and that came through in a future version, then the answer becomes a yes. Let's look look at diligence because it becomes very compelling. So it's just about how you're telling the story and what you're presenting, not the actual substance of, of what you're building. You have traction. You've yeah. got capital committed. You have a fantastic team and you're solving a hard problem in a big market. Those are all in your corner. So it's all about how you present the narrative about where you're going. Yeah. And I think that's key. Um, well, guys, thank you so much for being here. Ari, thanks for being our celebrity. And Gabriel, thanks for presenting. And I hope this feedback is helpful. Um, and if you guys are out there looking for help for your decks, please check out Pitch Us. Um, if you need help on the financials, check out Forecaster. There's always links in, in the descriptions. And uh, we will see you all next time.